a very good morning to chairperson of session and uh, Swamiji, our Mr. Christopher, U.S. Consul General, and to the distinguished uh, guests, learned people who are here today this morning. And uh, it's it, it is a referring to the topic, I mean the theme that says peace is born of justice. Well, it's interesting in, uh, in the context of uh, Malaysia, Malaysia being a multi-diverse, multi-religious, multi-racial country. And you can always see the team in Malaysian tourism, Malaysia, truly Asia. Uh, if man, if uh, I think many of you all would have visited Malaysia during your course of life, and you would have seen how Malaysia, since independence, uh, actually has found a way until today to navigate this relation between various communities, diverse background, and, uh, and make the country peaceful until now and prosper. And not forgetting it is also a very similar nature with what U.S. is about, even from the flag itself. The colors are very similar. The nature of the society is a free society. So it's very, very interesting how, like myself is a Tamilian who's living in the Indian uh, diaspora. And uh, how our society, the Indian-based Indian, Indian -based society, as uh, our, and our culture has intermingled with other cultures there. And uh, our mainstay, like, my parents, my father is a very active person in social circles when, during his time, uh, in the circle of religious, uh, spiritual, spiritual movements, and uh, uh, involvement in social uh, uh, activities with the societies. That itself has shaped my life when I saw both my parents who were very actively involved in. Uh, uh, anything to do with society in their life, from spiritual, from helping people in a way, whatever they, way they want, you know, many ways, culturally, even financially, whatever they can contribute. Uh, so more than that, they have shaped my life too. I've learned many things from them, especially my, uh, my father, Kumara Vasagam. And uh, being with the other cultures there, we can see that uh, uh, it's very unique how Malaysia's uh, concept of peaceful coexistence that has existed so long and it will exist for time to come. Of course, there are nationalistic behavior of certain races or certain uh, people in certain community which continually, continually provoke the nationalistic uh, attributes that they want better things. They are the signs of the soil, this kind of issues. But at the same time, our current Prime Minister, uh, with the guidance of our royal household, uh, a former unity government, the current unity government, which has composition of all the religion, all the races, and all, the, uh, all sorts of stakeholders, thinking, thinking people, uh, and uh, put up a government which is running so far one year, it's already completed one year anniversary. So it's very interesting to note the challenges that uh, a country like Malaysia faces uh, when it comes to putting this uh, and keeping this team that is peace is born through justice. It's very interesting in a, in a, in a global context we see this picture. Uh, uh, in, even in ASEAN, Malaysia has been, been a promoter of uh, issues of uh, non-interference, how we handle the issue of Myanmar and uh, the decision being Myanmar is kept in ASEAN fold. Usually if a country does that, they will actually uh, suspend the membership of the country. But during this time, there was a strong feeling uh, which is led like countries like Malaysia that we should not do that. We do that, how are we going to continue the dialogue? We will be cut off from the diplomatic channels. So we have to keep them in the fold, and it uh, doesn't matter what, but keep the dialogue going. 
uh, interesting. And until now, the dialogues are still going. Uh, there, hopefully, there will be some solutions coming in the near future for a country like Myanmar, uh, with the context within ASEAN. So these are some of the things that, in a reason, Malaysia has been a, a very strong proponent of a ceasefire and long-term solution. I mean, immediate solution for what is happening in in Middle East in in Gaza. So all these things, uh, and our Prime Minister has been uh, very hard traveling around the world, meeting world leaders. Even though we are a small country, might not uh, able to make big difference, but putting the thoughts, standing up for the people who are being, uh, having, uh, we just let go that what is happening on the conflict side, but the people, the innocent people, should not be uh, involved in such conflicts, you know, and uh, should, they should be spared and a ceasefire uh, uh, should be negotiated and uh, they should not be in, uh, involved in this arms conflict between uh, two conflicting parties. So these are some of the uh, great things that Malaysia, uh, even a small country, has stand up and uh, been having dialogue with major superpowers around the world, try to engage and bring justice wherever is possible and uh, that is Malaysia's uh, all the way it's a principle we have not uh, uh, we have, in our history we have not involved in any armed conflict with any country even with uh, Indonesia we had what I call confrontation and that was also uh, handled very well during uh, 1960s and eventually it came to the formation of Malaysia itself in 1963 uh, with uh, Singapore uh, and uh, the states of Sabah, Sabah, Sarawak. And then later on, Singapore decided to leave Malaysia and uh, with the due respect, we had peacefully negotiated an agreement to allow Singapore to uh, leave Malaysia and uh, form their own country. And then whatever necessary, the water deal is still there. Malaysia still is a major water supplier to Singapore and uh, it's a backbone of the, their water security for Singapore until now. Uh, if Malaysia could have uh, taken a decision not to stop uh, stop giving water in the name of any city, their prosperity is their money. We could have just said, stop, why we should give water? But we have not done that in the, in the principle of, you know, friendship, understanding that this should not be the way to solve that issue. So the water agreement is as kept as apart from any other conflicts, so that should be there. And Malaysia has supplied all the necessary, many food items, food security, many things that goes to Singapore on daily basis. Of course, we benefited economically, our farmers, our Malaysian traders benefits it. Malaysia produces a lot of palm oil, and it's also pro uh, benefit Singapore because the traders, they're able to make money with their financial uh, is being a financial hub in that region they, and uh, being a major porting port facility in, uh, in Singapore. They're able to transport and do financing for our palm oil trade throughout the world. So these are some of the things that keep those countries prosperous and keep going. And uh, as I touch on the water supply, many other things. So these are some of the things that uh, we can emulate in our, any other conflicts that countries uh, can learn from this experience. And Malaysia also has been uh, negotiating on peace uh, with uh, Southern Philippines, the Bangsa Moro, and in Southern, Philipp uh, Southern Thailand. Southern Thailand is still uh, going on. Uh, the conflict is still going on there. Uh, I mean, it's not a thing, but uh, there are certain elements that are still uh, putting insurgency in Southern Thailand and Malaysia is actively involved in trying to put uh, a peaceful solution to Southern Thailand there. Bangsa Moro has been more peaceful now. Only lately there is uh, this thing, but uh, that is still the government, the Philippine government is addressing with ASEAN. ASEAN has come up with a statement and uh, Malaysia supports uh, one of the countries that supported the statement, you know, that uh, this should, this kind of things should not be supported in the context of ASEAN, you know where a certain elements trying to impose in the name of uh, terrorist activity and uh, trying to go take control of a city 
in southern Thailand and establish their own thinking, the movement, you know. What do you call, uh, they say in the name of I, uh, Islamic State. So these kind of elements are uh, being addressed in the ASEAN context, not to prevail or not to have football in ASEAN. So all these are leading, keeping ASEAN country, uh, region in a peace and order uh, from a uh, uh, security nature. And uh, also the conflict with China on the South China Sea, uh, we have tried our, we are trying our best not to uh, create any major conflict over there because being a major sea route, the country sit down and keep on talking the terms of a good conduct, practices of good conduct, which can avoid conflicts in a major sea route, trade route for many uh, uh, countries, uh, that uh, major trading, international trade route. Uh, towards East Asia. So these are some of the elements that uh, Malaysia has been keep on uh, working on it uh, without, uh, 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 I mean, of, uh, existing like peace and uh, co uh, complying to this, uh, the theme that we are talking about today. So I just, uh, because I'm not, as Professor just told me on Friday, uh, these are some of the points uh, uh, in that short moment I can deliberate and bring it to this uh, congregation today in this conference. Uh, I just will end my uh, what I like to uh, say I've said already. That's just, thank you. I'll just end my uh, uh, what I've said. Just thank you.